Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem some string and it's a hard level question and it's a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks. The company tags of the question are Nutanix and the topic tags are strings, recursion, backtracking, data structures and algorithms. Yes, it's a sort of this, like we'll be using all these uh, topics like recursion, back, uh, backtracking and concepts of strings to solve this particular question. Okay, so let us go through the question now. Given a string of digits, okay, string of digits, the task is to check if it is a sum string. So what do you mean by sum string? A string S is called a sum string when it is broken down into more than one substring and the rightmost substring can be written as the sum of two substring before it okay and the same is recursively true for substrings before it so indeed he clearly told that beta do the rest of the half like once you figured out particular thing leave that next to the recursion it's completely defined and clearly instructed to you but the thing is understand the question before we proceed further in analyzing the things that is the main task okay so these are the examples we'll go through them and the expected time complexity is length of s cube and uh, space complexity like auxiliary spaces uh, of s length of string s so and length of string of s can go up to 500 so just to mention that i'm not able to you know uh, figure out a solution that's much better than the des described solution here as per the time complexity and space i figured out a solution and i feel it is a brute force but i'm not sure i i'm not sure like whether there is a solution that much more optimal than that because of time constraints i'm having i have an semester examination to go for uh, today and tomorrow as well so i cannot record the video in the afternoon time because of the noise and all etc that's going to come up in the hostel i i hope you people know all those things so that is the reason i'm winding up this at this point because even brute force solution has a lot of things from which we can learn and it's a you know solution that way we can test our concepts of uh, backtracking and recursion so that's also a very beautiful solution so and also it fits correctly because size of the length, like length of the string goes up to 500. So it's completely fine to use that particular solution, right? So these are the example, let us deep, uh, analyze them in deep. So this is the first string that has been given. S is equal to 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 3, 6, 6, 0, okay? So the output is true. Why is it true? Let us first analyze this thing. So as per the explanation, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, double 6, 0 can be broken down as 12, 24, 36, and 60. Now, if we carefully observe 36, 36 is the sum of the strings that are appearing to the left side of it. The two strings that are appearing to the left side of it. What is that? 24 and 12. So what is that sum? 36. Yes, it matches. Now, once you have got the third string, once you have got the third string, your fourth string must be a sub, uh, sum of second string and the third string. So in that case, what would be the sum now? 24 plus 36. What is that equal to 60? Is your fourth string equal to 60? Yes, it is. So yes, completely. Like after 60, is there anything else to be analyzed? Nothing. So you have come to the end of the string. So this point you can break down and like you can finish it up. You can wind it up. And yes, you can completely say that it is a sum string because all the things, all the you know strings that you have found are actually satisfying this property that a particular substring that you are taking that must be the result of the sum of the substrings that are appearing to the left side of it. Okay two substring that are appeared in the left side of it. So, and yeah, I will, uh, we'll see that in brief. Okay. I'm, I was about to tell the technique here, but let us finish up the examples and then we'll discuss about it. And coming to the example two. So example two, you can see here the output is true as well. So how can we decide it? So this whole string has been divided into one, triple one, triple one, double, double one, two and double two, three. So what can I say from this? Why is it so? So if I come on to one, one, two, what is the one, one, two, one, one, two is basically one plus one, one, one. And that is basically the strings that are appearing to the left side of it. Yes. One, one, two gets satisfied with this property. What about two, two, three? Two, two, three is equal to one, one, two plus one, 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 isn't it? So it is the sum of one, one, two and one, one, one. So yes, two, two, three also is satisfying that property. Okay. The string, the particular string that I'm standing on. Okay. The particular string that I'm standing on must be a result of the sum of the, the before two strings exact two strings that are appearing to the left side of it okay the very next uh, the very before uh, two uh, like very two strings that are appearing to the left side of it okay one 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 and triple uh, double one two itself it's not like you going to consider one or some other string that's not possible only the string that are appearing to the left side of it so double triple one and double one two okay this sum is actually equal to double two three so that is a reason and this is also the whole thing is also some string because after two to three is there anything left that to be analyzed no we have come to the end so yes it's completely fine this is a some string every string is every possible substring is actually satisfying this particular condition so this is also true now let us uh, figure out the approach i hope you people understood what are we talking and what is the question is actually being asked for so i'll just erase these things before we proceed further let us analyze this with a common life example okay that's very very important especially questions that are marked as hard if we can visualize them that is a perfect deal of you know approach let us assume you have a bread loaf like this okay so it might not be an accurate diagram please uh adjust this is a very worst diagram i can say uh that i've drawn i should have drawn it better but uh I think, yeah, this would work. Okay, fine. Um, so it's going to take some time for this one, I think. Okay, fine. This is fine now. Uh, okay, okay, this is great. Let us assume this is a bread loaf. Okay, bread loaf, bread loaf. 
So what I'm saying is you must cut that in such a way that if I'm assuming that I'm going to cut here, okay, I'm going to cut here and I'm going to cut here. So I'm going to get two pieces. What are the two pieces that I'm going to get? This whole piece and this whole piece. Now I'm saying that once you have cut two pieces, once you have cut the first two pieces, your third piece must be the sum of the size of this one and this one. So this whole size, this this full size is the sum of first and second, first plus second. So this much size loaf, I must cut at the third as a third piece. So it will be like this much. Okay, the same exact thing I must cut here. Okay, I must cut here. So this is the third piece. Now what I'm saying is your fourth piece must be a sum of second piece size plus third piece size. Okay, your fourth piece sum, size must be the sum of second piece size and third piece size. So in that case, how much would it be? Second piece type, uh, uh, second piece starts from here. Let me use a different ink. So second piece starts from here, isn't it? This is the point of second piece, and this is the point of third piece. So this much size must be there. And if I just replicate that here, okay, this much size. Uh, so this this is how it must it's going to. So let me erase this and write it properly. So let us assume it's going to this point, okay. But how much is your blood block there? It's only till this point. There is nothing extra, okay. Your required size is more than the available size. So in this case, you'll return false. It's not possible. So what are you saying? What are you dilute, uh, diluting it or boiling down to? You are saying that the way you cut first and second will determine how you are going to cut third, fourth, fifth and whether you are able to successfully follow the same pattern and reach the end perfectly, exactly. Okay, you must reach it exactly. It's not like the yeah, required thing is less than the available thing or your available thing. Uh, uh, like in that, in, it's not going to work because in this case, in my, in this case, this much required is there for the fourth piece but my fourth piece only is this much. So how can I cut it? It's not possible. It's not being satisfied. So this is not going to happen. If I cut like this so i must cut it in such a fashion that the principle will be followed for the third piece fourth piece and so on till the end okay till the end it's going to satisfy so the same thing happens in the string as well in the string what i'm asking is so in the very first example we have 12 24 okay let me write it properly 12 24 36 60 this is the whole string that i have let us assume i'm cutting it here and i'm cutting it here so what is the strings that i've got first two strings one and two okay one and two now what are their sum one plus two that is actually equal to three so do i have Lots the length of three only one this is only one character so one and what is the available size that you have this is a uh, six okay one is less than six okay it's fine it's come it's satisfying that but is it like the third string is equal to three is it it is two equal to three no, this is not because the result that you have got is three. That must be the third part, isn't it? Here, that must be the third uh, third character. But that is not there. That is not there. That's not been possible. It's two here, but we have got three. So this is not matching. So in this case, we'll return false. So this is not how you're going to cut. So now let us assume I'm not cutting it here. Okay. So I'll just erase this part. So let me write it in a proper fashion. If I take the first string length. Okay. So I'll dry run it here. First string length. Or before that, before that. Uh, Okay, before that, let us write the conditions. Okay, let us write the conditions. What are the conditions? So after the cut, after the, uh, or I should say, the final result, the final result depends on, depends on how you cut, how you cut the first two strings. Isn't it? The first two strings. The first two strings. It depends. Once you found the first two strings, then the remaining result, I mean the final result, will depend upon the first two strings itself. First two strings must add up to get third string and then second and third must add up to get fourth string and it goes on. This all goes on till the end. And if you're successfully able to follow the same pattern till the end, then you can return true. Else you will return false. What are the conditions that you will return false? Return false. Return false when, when the required, the required size is greater than available size as we have seen in the bread bluff example so if our required size is greater than the available size then there's no way that you can cut it so it's uh, it's completely you know um, wrong method to construct like first string and second string in that pattern you must change the first string and second string length so that's not how you can proceed so that's one and second so if you have got something and its size is less than the available size okay we have got something like uh, we have seen here like one plus two equal to three and its size is only one but we have six characters there so it's fine it's completely fine but this three must be equal to the third character no that's present like this three must be equal to the character that at the required position so it match it should be match it, it is not uh, like it is not matching it is not matching okay so the result mean i.e result and substring okay result and substring in the original string in these two are not matching then you can return false okay substring in the original string original string okay if these two are matching if these two are not matching okay if these two if it is uh, i'll just write it properly if it is not matching like the result and the substring in the uh, original string are not matching then you can return false these two conditions are the points where you want to return false okay now we'll do the dry run whatever i'm saying now we'll do the dry run so let us take the example one two two four three six six zero one okay so one two two four three six six zero let us assume i'm cutting like string one okay str1 and str2 okay str2 now assume i'm cutting like string like length is only one length okay and this is also one length so what would be i'll be getting string three as string three i'd be getting as uh, 
1 plus 2 that is actually equal to 3. So is am I having 3 at this point? No. Why am I searching for 3 at this point? Because I've taken one character here. One length character. I've taken one length character. So how much is left? This is the point that is left. From this I need to check, right? From this I need to check. So what am I getting as the result? 3. And what is this length of this character? 1. So I must check at this particular point. From this particular point of length 1, is that equal to 3? Is 2 equal to 3? 2 is the only character string that you can get of length 1, isn't it? So is 2 equal to 3? No, it is not. So that's the reason you cannot form this combination. It's not possible. This combination is not possible. Okay. So this is also gone. So this is also gone. So this is also. So this status is gone. Okay, now come to string 1. Let us assume I'm taking string 1 as length 1 of length 1 only. String 2 as length 2. So that means what am I telling? I'll be cutting it here to get string 1. I'll be cutting it here to get string 2. Now what will be the result of these two addition? 1 plus 22. So because 22 is what I'm getting as a sec second string. So what is that result? 23. So now we have got 23 to be length of uh, 2. So where did we cut? At this point. So from this point I need to check of length 2. Is it matching? From length 2 what's the substring that I'm going to get? 43. Is it equal to 23? 43 is equal to 23? No it is not. So this is also going to flop. Like this is also not going to work. So so let us even cut this out. So even this is not going to work out. So what is the next possibility? I'll take string 1 of length 1 only and string 2 of length 3. So if I take that, this is what is going to happen. This is where I'm going to cut here and cut here. And what is the addition now? It is 1 plus 224 that is equal to 225. So from this point, what is this length? This length is 3. So where did we cut here? Here we have cut. So from here, take a length of 3. So here, what is the string that you're going to get? Substring that is 366. Is it equal to 225? No, it is not. So this is also a flaw. So here, this combination also will not work. So we'll even remove this. and. Uh, I'll just extend this point. So it's going to take some time, but it's going to clear your doubts and all. So if I'm taking, going to take string 2 of length 4, so what would be the addition that time? 1 plus 2243. Two, that would be 2244. Two, four, four. Okay, 2244 two, four, four is what I'm going to get. So uh, the division is like this. And here I've cut. So what is the, from this point, I need to start of length 4. And this is where you'll be returning false because your available size is only 3. And here the size that you have got is 4. Your required size is 4, but your available size is 3. So you'll be returning false. Okay, this is where you'll be returning false. So this is also done. So this is also one of the condition where you'll be returning false. Okay? Okay. In the third, above three conditions, we have written false because it's not matching. Because not matching, not matching. And here, here it's not matching also. But before that, size is only not required. Size available, available is less than size required. So this is the reason why we have you know deleted now like written false. Now take string one of length two and string two of length one again. Okay. So in that case, what would be the uh, thing like two? This one. So what would be the uh, addition now? Twelve plus two. That is equal to fourteen. So start from this particular point. Start from this particular point of length. How much? This is two length. So take two length. What is that? Forty three. What will be getting is 43 equal to 14? No, this is also not. So in this case also you'll return false. Okay. So this is also gone. Now you'll be getting a condition where you can return true happily. So where is that? So if I take string one of length one and string two of length two, then I'll be having the cut cut set here at this point. So what is the addition now? So addition is 12 plus 24. That is equal to 36. And how much length it is? Two. So take from this point, take length two. That is 36. Is 36 equal to 36? Yes, it is. It is. So you can return true. Like it's not like you can return true. Now we'll be going to check for the next parts. Okay, next parts. So you'll be cutting a uh, thing like this. You'll happily cut here. And now you'll analyze these two strings. Okay, now we'll analyze these two strings. What is the sum of these two strings? That is equal to 24 plus 36 is equal to 60. And is 60 actually matching? Like 60's length is 2. So from this cut, take off, take a string of length 2. So this only this. So that is 60. Is 60 equal to 60? Yes. And after here at this point, we can see that we have reached the end. So we'll even write a condition to check as we re reach the end or not uh, after the match. So if it is matching and we have reached the end, so we can return true. Okay, we can return true. So in this case, we'll be returning true. Okay, we'll be returning true. So that is the whole thing. I hope you people understood what are we trying to do. We are going to write two conditions to return false and we are going to write a one single condition to return true if in case we have reached the end and that there is a match. Okay. There is a match of the string, substring and the thing that we have found the result and if we reach the end of the string then we can completely return true. So happily return true. Okay. So this is the thing that we need to uh, analyze. So these two conditions for uh, false for false and I hope this bread uh, loaf example actually made some sense to you people so what are we trying to do and how are we actually approaching this problem so I hope that actually helped you uh, you know make the blueprint of the approach at least so it's all depending upon the first string and second string how are you dividing those two okay so now let us write the same thing in the code so let us first take the size of the string str dot size okay so once we take that for int i equal to 1 uh, i equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus and for int j equal to uh, 1, okay, j equal to 1, j, so i plus j must be less than n, isn't it? So that is the, you know, string 2 length that you are actually considering. So that must also be less than n. So if, like I'll be writing the uh, helper function, like check, so str, str and the beginning, where are you beginning? At the 0th index, 
i j if this is actually true then return true okay return true so if this is not true then you'll be checking with another possibilities just like we have checked with one string one of one length and then string two of one two three four length and again string one of two length like it goes on and if any case it's not returning a true then you can happily return false okay so this is the thing now we need to do the help write the helper function so bool check so string str int start position int uh, or you can say int length one int length two so l1 denotes the string sub like first substring length and l2 denotes the second substring length so what is the string s1 so s1 is so uh, uh, like s1 would be str dot uh, sfstr okay this is the stl that i'm using and from the start take a uh, length one okay so this is the thing and string s2 so while i'm writing the code you also please try to do it manually or take a paper and pen write the same thing like i'm, I'm writing in code right str dot substr start comma line one so write the same thing in result okay so let us take the example like we are considering one two two three four six zero consider this write it on a paper and write s1 what is s1 actually if i do write this function write this uh, str dot uh, substr what is the s1 that i'm going to get and write the same line s2 so this way you can understand what i'm actually trying to do okay and uh, str dot S, this is done and then str dot str comma now your start would be start plus length one and from there you take length two okay do this do this on paper and pen uh, using paper and pen you'll definitely understand what i'm trying to do and what is your string s3 so you can write an uh, uh, another helper function like add strings add strings and where you can send this to s1 and s2 and now this s3 length is actually equal to s3 dot length okay so what is the first condition that you need to check if your s3 length turns out to be uh, length that is available so how do you check it str dot size or instead of checking it every time we can even send that so here i will send int n so here i'll just send it in so what is n n is the original size string isn't it n minus what is the thing that you need to write l1 minus l2 uh, len2 minus star isn't it this is the whole string that we have uh, covered so far so if in that case return false if your uh, required string size is greater than the available size return false or else or else if your particular string s3 matches with the uh, you know thing that we are uh, trying to find like the substring so that is start plus length 1 and plus length 2 and uh, of length how much is uh, s3 length okay and if it is actually matching if the result that you have got is actually matching at the substring from the division point of same length and now there is there is two cases if you have reached the end okay if you have reached then reach the end in the sense start plus length one plus uh, length two plus s3 length it will be equal to the total size isn't it if you are coming to this position that means you have reached the end so return true okay return true so if else if you haven't reached the end still then you can call the recursion function on the other part once we have like 12 24 36 60 once we have found out that 12 plus 24 is actually equal to 36 now we'll be calling a function to check 24 36 okay 24 plus 36 is equal to 60 or not that's what we're going to find so for that reason the like our uh, this particular thing would be str comma start plus length one so that is the string two and uh, and then what is the other thing length two and uh, s3 okay uh, yeah this is start plus length one and length two and then s3 length okay s3 length and then finally n okay so start plus length one would be the start point uh, like the division point that we have done and length two would be the second string length is uh, second string length and i mean uh, once you do the recursion call for the next call for example in 12 24 36 now you will be doing a recursion call on 24 36 isn't it? 24 36 so this 24 length is denoted by length two 36 length it divided uh, denoted by s3 length and start plus length one divide, uh, denotes the division point okay division point and n is the like uh, original substring length so and then finally if it's not giving you anything like written false okay so if in case it's not matching if this is not matching if this is not matching so you can just uh, written false okay so this is also done and finally what is the thing that you need to write so now you need to write uh, the function for uh, this uh, add strings okay add strings add strings so string num1 okay string num2 and so some people might argue like they can use they'll use an uh, stl function stoi and then two string first stoi to convert the string into num and then add them and then uh, convert two string by using two string you can use it if the constraints are very less but here you can see the constraints go up to like the length of the string goes up to 500 so how can you uh, you which data variable can you use to store a 500 length uh, integer it's not possible right so that's the reason it's better to use the conventional approach that's the while loop approach to add it so int i equal to num1 dot length uh, okay num1 dot length and int j equal to 
num2 dot length okay so we have got the first string uh, length and second string length uh, so after this what is the thing like string output you can denote so string output so i think this is very basic you people might be knowing like how do you add two strings isn't it into carry equal to zero so while uh, I'm not explaining this in brief because we all know this while i greater than or equal to 0 or uh, j greater than or equal to 0 or carry so if in case all these things or like any of these things into sum equal to carry is what first you'll be taking so if i greater than or equal to 0 that means there is something that you can take at i position so add sum plus equal to num1 of i minus 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 0 so instead of writing again i minus minus you can even directly do this okay and if in case your j also there is something to be taken j less greater than or equal to 0 then also you can add sum plus equal to num2 for num2 j minus 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 comma 0 because j denotes uh, this particular you know num2 length so after this so you need to divide now so what is that int reminder would be sum uh, modulo 10 and uh, this is what you'll be adding to your particular output and carry would be sum divided by 10 okay so that was the extra amount that is left after dividing by 10 so you'll be pushing out like output output dot push back off push back off converting this particular reminder into string reminder plus zero okay so once you do this you can just uh, reverse this thing else you are living in the parallel universe like if you do not uh, you know reverse this thing it's very basic sense that we need to reverse this isn't it so reverse output dot begin and then return this output okay so i just wanted to check if i've done everything correctly first i've taken the reminder and then i've taken the carry and then i'm pushing back this reminder and i've finally uh, reversing this particular thing and yeah i think i've written everything perfectly i did not miss anything so yes that's it so i'll just compile and run for now it must work uh, okay why is this so why is this giving me a wrong answer so string uh, oh okay fine 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 so i should be doing minus one right this is the mistake that i've done okay so i'm taking out of bond something that's not possible right so length minus one is what i need to take okay so yeah it's fine so sometimes these small mistakes will also cost you a lot so it's very important that you keep a note of these small things isn't it so okay now submit the code mm. Okay, fine. It's working properly. So I hope you people understood. So if there are any doubts, let me know through the comment section. I'll happy to revert back and help you on that. So for your reference quotes in C++, Java, Python are there in the description. Please go through them. To be honest, like at the very first point of uh, introduction to this question, I found out that it's going to depend on string one and string two, like the first two strings. And it's from that we can completely evaluate the answer. But I was looking out for some uh, optimal approach, but I'm not able to come up due to time constraints and pressure constraints that I'm going through. So if in case you found some better solution, please let me know through the comments. I'll be happy to learn that. Okay. But I'm also happy that I'm educating on this particular solution because this is also a very beautiful solution of back tracking you're trying out all the possibilities in a very cool manner right you're listing out the false conditions and then you're proceeding further with the things that you have evaluated so it's a very good uh, you know thing that we can actually learn a lot from this particular thing right so thank you for watching guys and uh, before that yes this is a like a satisfying all the time constraint and space constraint and yes this is a good solution brute force and yeah good solution so yes thank you for watching this particular solution so stay tuned